one of the schools that came out on top of the competition this year was Manning's High School from Westmoreland. The Manning's team with their project, dubbed Fishes to Riches, was a hit with patrons and judges. This is an aquaponic setup which we call Fishes to Riches. Now what this is, is a system where we are growing plants and fish together in one ecosystem. Now, the, the, it's a combination of two agricultural practices. Aquaculture, the, growing, the raising of fish, and hydroponics, growing plants without the use of soil. So we put it together and we get a self-sustainable ecosystem. What happens is that the waste material in the form of ammonia is released from the fish. Now nitrifying bacteria in the water converts it from nitrites and then nitrates. Then this um, nutrient-filled water is pumped upwards by the submersible pump, filling all the grow beds with this nutrient-filled water. Now the plant roots absorb the nutrients, and then these nutrients are what um, cause the growth in the plants. And then the biofiltered water flows back into the system. Now what we feed the fish on is something called duckweed, small green plants that is um, found on ponds and it grows in the water, has a very high protein value. So it replenishes its own stock, so it's very self-sustainable. And we use a solar panel to charge a battery and an inverter to change it from DC to AC power to operate our pumps. So it's completely self-sufficient and it grows two yields, fish and plants. The Mannix team says its project is timely, as more concerns are raised about food security. We are growing, um, raising fish and growing plants together in one system, right? So what happened? Um, the fish waste, that is what is used to grow the plants. What we have here is a submersible pump. This is what is used to pump the water all the way up to the top. And then there's tubing attached inside that pipe that takes the water and this is piping so it distributes it among all the grow beds and then it flows back into the system. So it's a recycling thing. Bridgeport High School from Portmore in St. Catherine also attracted a lot of attention with its cassava project, which included a line of cassava products that focused on cashing in on the ground provision. We have cassava beer, four different flavors. We have aloe, lemon, minty, and original. Then we have cassava clothes starch, cassava paper glue, and cassava jewelry. That's earrings, necklace, and bracelets. And the waste from all our other products we use to make cassava animal feed. Now, what we do for the cassava bear is that we would cut it up into pieces, shred it, and then we tenderize it by heating it in liquid. And then we would add some yeast, dry brewer's yeast, we add sugar and put it some water, put it to ferment, and then for four to six weeks, then we decant the liquid and we add some hops to it and we get our beer. For the other flavors, we put in the mint and the lemon and aloe during the tenderizing process. We add the mint to those and put them to ferment. There's a cassava aloe beer, you know. Princess, I give you a while ago. I tell you, man, they make rich. Now for a close starch, what we do is that we grate the cassava, we add water, we squeeze out the starch from it, the liquid portion, we allow it to settle out, we pour off the clear version, that's the top part, then we add a little bit of hot water to it, a little cold water, some alum salt for its adhesive properties to give it stickiness, and then we add a sodium benzoate for preservative. Now for our glue, what we do is that we cut up the cassava, we boil it until it is soft, to boil it to get the jelly texture from it, and then we would add water to it, and we add flour, sugar, get it. The jewelry is the cassava itself. We peel it, and then cut out our shapes, we paint it, and then varnish it. The project from Yalas High School focused on using the coconut to produce various products. The school made the traditional coconut byproducts, but the more innovative product was the stab-proof vest. The stab-proof vest was the original idea of, of certain individuals of our institution. Okay, um, the part of the coconut we used was the coconut ox, which has some quite, well, I would say, interesting properties. Because the fact of it is that the older it gets, is the harder it gets and the lighter it gets. So the fact is, the, the longer you'll have one of our coconut ox vests, stab-proof vests is the stronger that vest will be and the lighter it will be. 
individuals also made reference to the numerous trappings within our high schools and they saying, I think the government should put in place stop food fences for high schools. Well, who to tell? Because, well, any individual who is at risk of being stabbed would use a stop food vest, just as the one who is being shot would use a bulletproof.